Hey, what's up? I'm Jason, and today we're going to talk about why you should be a game developer. I've been doing game development for about 15 or 20 years now, and I really love it. And I've seen a lot of the cool benefits that come along with being a game developer and really experienced what it's like. And I want to share that with you and tell you why, if you've been thinking about it, thinking, hey, maybe I want to get into game development, maybe that would be fun, maybe I should change careers why I think you probably should, and I'll knock out some of the misconceptions and things that people think might stop them from doing it. So let's get going. The first thing that I wanna talk about, because I think it's really relevant today, is just job stability. When you're a game developer, and by developer, generally mean the programming side of it, where you're doing the programming and maybe a little bit of the design and stuff, but when you're doing the code, you are very stable in your job. I've seen a lot of people getting laid off recently, a lot of people getting furloughed, just being out of work. Game developers, especially on the programming side, are not seeing that problem. There are still, of course, some that are getting laid off, but most of those are related around existing business problems, not stuff that's related to just the global economy. When the economy goes bad, people get laid off, people go home, people play games. Lots of people still have to build games. I don't anticipate or see a time when building games stops happening. Now, let's talk about stability though inside the company so say you're in a game company and this is a hundred percent from experience you're in a game company and the game company is going to lay off 20 percent of the people that work there right they're like hey we need to do a big cut we're laying off 20 percent of our people first thing they do every time that i've seen it done is they exclude the entire programming or engineering team they might take one or two people that they've wanted to get rid of for a while and just kind of include them in there so that they can get rid of that person but they do not generally pull from that pool of people pull from the pool of people right they, they're gonna pull the designers um artists unfortunately um and QA and staff and even management. You're more likely, I would say, to see your manager get fired than yourself get fired as a game programmer, at least when it comes to firing because of financial reasons. If it's bad performance or whatever, obviously anybody can get fired for that, but you're still a lot safer as a programmer. And the biggest reason there is that you're just hard to replace because experience on the team pays and well makes a huge, huge difference. A, a programmer that's been on your team for three years is a whole lot more valuable than a programmer who's never seen your code. So let's go on to the next thing though. So what happens if you are working and suddenly you get laid off, right? You're, you're working this awesome game job and there's only one game company in your city and you get laid off. Well, not a problem because if you can code, you can write game code, you can write non-game code and it's generally easier. I wouldn't, I don't know that I like to say it this way, but I would say that game programming is in general quite a bit harder than non-game programming, just overall. Obviously there are different parts. You could have easy game programming and really hard high level um, or hardcore stuff that's non-game stuff and, and mix and match. But overall game programming requires us to do some things that we don't have to do necessarily in non-game jobs, especially around performance and things just get kind of easy. So it does translate really well into tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of jobs out there that are for non-game stuff, web stuff, enterprise jobs, or even um, jobs that are doing enterprise -y things inside a game engine. There are tons of them out there, so you still have that extra layer of stability. But let's say you're in the game industry and you're actually at a game job. What's that like? Well, it's usually a lot of fun, and that's just because you're working on video games. Now, if you're working on video games that you really don't like or you have no interest in, there's something boring like it's a, maybe it's a casino game or something, I could see it's not going to be nearly as much fun. You're still going to have a little bit more fun than I would say in a normal corporate environment, corporate programming environment, but it's not going to be as fun. Overall though, it's still going to be fun, right? You're going to have a blast um, just because you're working with other game designers and coworkers who have similar interests. And this is, I think, kind of one of the other things that I really wanted to talk about was the people that you work with are going to make it fun because you're going to find that you have similar interests. And this is a weird one because think about when you go to work at, I don't know, some company that does healthcare stuff and you're doing web stuff for a healthcare company. The other people that are there aren't there because they have this special passion about web stuff and healthcare. They're not there because you guys share like this interest in like, oh yeah, we really love uh, this web inter this web framework and we really love uh, healthcare stuff or you know wh whatever, some kind of doctor. They're there because it's a job and they're doing it because they want the money. 
with game dev jobs, everybody generally tends to really love video games. And you're gonna find that you have very similar hobbies and similar interests to people, at least relative to non-game jobs. I've worked a lot of non-game jobs and a lot of game jobs, and I found that almost every time, like at the game jobs, almost everybody is kind of like a group of people that hangs out, they know each other, they kind of are pretty friendly and then the enterprise side it's these very small little clicks or like two or three people that hang out and then nobody else talks to each other because they just don't have these common shared interests outside of work there's nothing to talk about but when you're in the game industry you just talk about video games all the time and everybody's into it and speaking of just talking about work or talking to people about work, when you work on video games, you generally have cool stuff that you can actually share and show off. Like I've worked in enterprises before and I could build these cool little tools that do really valuable stuff that might save millions or tens of millions or whatever, make us lots of money, but I can't show it to my kids or my wife, or if I do, they're gonna look at it and go, oh, I don't know, it's a weird looking ugly form, who cares? But if I make a video game, I can not just show it to them, I can have them in there and play it, I can show it to other people, and people are excited and impressed all the time and it's just kind of a fun feeling of course it's not the only reason to go do it but it's one of many now i want to talk about something that i think is really important and it's the fact that getting into game development is something that you actually can do it's the kind of thing that you can learn to do right now from home you don't have to wait you don't have to be a math wizard you don't even really have to have passed a math class if you can multiply and divide you're good assuming you can add and subtract too you don't need to go get a big cs degree you don't need to go to school for four years or six years you can literally start today you can start just by building a game this afternoon or this evening or throughout the week. I actually have a three hour tutorial where you can go through and build an Angry Birds clone. You can build it, shoot your bird off, go knock down some pigs and have a lot of fun. You can really get started with this stuff at home. There's a ton of information out there available. When I got started, it wasn't nearly as easy, but I still did it kind of this way. I, I did a lot of research, a lot of looking online, experimenting and figuring it out as I went. And a lot of game developers are kind of the same way. We just figure out what the problem is we figure out what it is we want to build and then just start searching asking questions searching 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 and then figure it out as you go it's not like being a doctor where if you mess up or you want to experiment you might kill somebody or cause some serious pain or being a mechanic where you, hey you might break somebody's car or kill them or cause a lot of damage the turnaround for our iteration and testing is instant we can test things and know whether or not it broke and if it breaks it just means that we got to restart our program that's it Literally, there's no harm, there's no risk, and it's really, really easy to get started. There's a ton of information out there. Again, I'll link some stuff down below if you wanna go just learn more about how to get started, but there's absolutely no reason that you can't get started at home right now, as long as you have an internet connection and a computer of some sort that can run a game engine like Unity. Now on the topic of being easy to learn, I also wanted to mention that when you have a hobby, that's also the thing that you're working on. So you're working on like, I really like game development and I work on game development like as a hobby and do it as my job you're going to get better a lot faster. It's just like anybody who is like a mechanic and they like working on cars for a hobby and they're just constantly doing it. If you're constantly exercising that skill even outside of work because you enjoy it so much, you're going to get a lot better at it. And this really just kind of leads into, I think the most important thing, which is that you're going to hopefully love going to work. You should love your job as a game developer. If you don't love your job as a game developer, well, try to fix it a little bit. And then if you can't fix it, get a new one because there are a lot of game development jobs out there and it should be a really fun thing to do that you should get excited to go to work about know on like when i've worked on non-game projects it's extremely rare that i'm like excited to go into work and like do this commit or do this build and see what's going to happen for the day uh, you know there may be some weird edge case where like i'm trying out some new technology and i'm excited about that for a day but with game development it's almost daily it's like you go in you make this thing you show it to people everybody is excited and you have a blast with it now before i wrap this up um there was one last thing that i want to talk about but i wanted to just remind everybody to don't forget to hit the like button share this video and subscribe and all that stuff it really does help i really appreciate it and um, it just helps the channel grow and helps more people see this kind of stuff and learn and become better game developers i also wanted to say a special thanks to everybody on patreon who will probably scroll here or somewhere um 
I don't know. Uh, I'll leave that up to editing. But thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Um, you guys are awesome. And I want to jump into the last thing that I really want to talk about here, which was remote jobs for game development have been really prevalent in the last couple of weeks and just picking up. But I would say over the last 10 years, it's been a big growing trend where I've seen a lot of remote game development jobs just become available, especially with the smaller studios because they don't want to have to pay for office space and they can save a lot of money just hiring somebody who lives somewhere else and don't have to relocate them, don't have to bring them in every day. And they can hire talent from anywhere in the world and it doesn't really make a difference. Having the person come in and sit in the seat there doesn't matter if everybody's got the hardware at home and hardware is cheap. Um, it's prevalent, everybody's got it. So there's no reason that people need to go in for some special thing anymore. And because of that, I think that no matter where you are, no matter what it is you're doing, if you're thinking about getting into game development, you've been thinking like, hey, maybe that would be fun. Maybe one day I'll be a game developer. I'll just keep working this job or, you know, I don't have the time to do it right now. Everybody's got the time right now, pretty much. Just think about it and spend some time and maybe just cut out an hour, two hours a day and just dive in. Get started with it try it out and you might find out that, hey, you love it, it changes your life and suddenly going to work is not a terrible, boring thing at all. It's a fun, exciting thing that you can't wait to do and you love your job and you're having a blast at it. So that's why you should be a game developer. And that's, I mean, that's why I'm a game developer. I love it. I can't imagine doing anything else. And I, I can't think of anything else I would recommend people do. So get on it.